Hello everyone, I'm just waiting for, see if anybody's gonna hop on, let the video start a little bit here. So I'll be starting in a second. All right, Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a really good time last night. Whatever you did, I was in bed before midnight, so very quiet, so I feel fine today which is good. <laughs> Didn't do much though. Did not feel like a New Year's really. <clears throat> okay, what we're going to talk about today are a few things. And I had kind of put down five steps, like the five steps to kind of live your life with more vibrant energy and health. And that's, kind of, of course, that's what we're going to talk about today too. But I'm also going to kind of go into maybe some other things that you were not like, may not have thought that I would be covering in this type of video. But, and that is because when we go to make changes or in our life, right? The most important thing that keeps us on track is, is not, is mostly our mindset. So it's how we think about things because we can know what to do. You can know what to do. You can know what to eat. You can know all of that stuff. You can have all the knowledge, but for some reason you don't stick with it, right? You don't stay on track. You get off track easily and then you don't get back on. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Also, as well as some of the food stuff and some of the, um, and talk about energy, like ways that you could be losing energy, things that could be causing the depletion in energy that you feel. So that's also, and I am just going to, I'm on my regular Facebook and I'm going to share it to my group. I forgot to start that. Let's get this on my group too, where I said I would post it too. Usually I just do on my group often for these trainings, but Today, I'm doing it here too. I'm just showing this. I can barely see here without my glasses. Got it. Okay. Right on. Okay, it's starting there. So if you want, you can just send me a comment just right below if you have any questions or comments of course right below this video if you're watching if you're watching live great say hello so i know who's watching live if you don't you if you watch the replay you can still post any questions or comments underneath this video because i will be seeing them today so great let's get started all right now what was the first thing oh yes so i was really thinking yesterday and last night and someone had asked me a question a little while ago about why or what would be the one thing that I would say to somebody like kind of my big one thing message big important message that would keep them on track or keep them like get them motivated again to really get going and to stay on the healthy eating path so hi Debbie so what I um then I posted a picture on Facebook that some people didn't like so I took it down and it was just a visual that really helps me. And so I've been thinking about this and I'm like, how can I best represent my big message or kind of what I want to say or what keeps me on track or what keeps me eating the way I do for a long period of time? And it really does come down to seeing, like I actually, I'm very visual, so I visualize, so I see things. Uh, I see the life that I could have if I didn't eat healthy, if I let myself go, um, if I didn't live a healthy life. So I see that. And the image that I had put up was a, was a lady in a wheelchair who didn't look healthy. Now, it had nothing to do with the wheelchair, okay? Not, if you're born with some sort of debilitating disease or illness that makes you in a wheelchair, that, you know, of course. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about things that we can pre prevent. Things that we, we continually, if we continually let our health go and not pay attention then eventually where, what's going to happen to us. And so that's what I think about. And when I'm out in public and I notice a lot of really unhealthy people or pe people who are really obese or people who look very, even someone like people who'd be about my age and I'm 53 and I notice maybe how old they look or how sick they look or how, how, how unhappy they look or how they walk, how they can't walk. And that really, hi Noella. And that to me, I see that that could be me if I don't start taking care of myself. And I think maybe other people don't think that way. Maybe they see that as, oh, that's that person. They're, they're sick, they're unhealthy, they're this and that, but they're so much older than me, or that's not me, or that'll never be me. That whole, this will never happen to me. And I know that if anybody is a mother, you might understand how when your kids are young, sometimes, you know, they, 
if they get into something drugs or something you're like oh you this could happen to you so you shouldn't they'll be like mom that's not going to happen to me that and you you know you in your head you're going you don't know that you shouldn't say that yet as an adult we do that to ourselves right we think oh well that's not going to be me that would never be me the thing is is that it could be unless of course you're doing as much as you can to prevent that, right? And of course, there's sometimes, I believe that health, again, is holistic, mind, body, spirit. And so, you know, holding on to anger, expressing anger, being a little depressed, all these things can also cause health issues within your body. And so it's not just about what you eat. So we're really bringing in the mind, body, and spirit. So everything today, not just what you eat, right? That's what's so important. And that's why when asked about my message, like what would keep someone on track for eating healthy, and that's really not my message. I know I work so much with food, right? So much with food and eating healthy, but really it is about how you want to live your life. So for me, the most important thing to me is freedom in my life, freedom and independence. It always has been. So that's the number one thing. So, but I realized very young that if I didn't have health, I wouldn't have the freedom and I wouldn't have the independence. And as I aged, especially when we age, you see it very strongly, like when my mom was in a home or when I see people. It's so evident that they lose their freedom, they lose their independence when you age and your health starts to decline. And so it's, it's something that I've just always been able to think of. And it's funny because I never thought, I always thought other people probably would think the same way, but they don't. So for me, that is what keeps me on track. And to me, that's extremely powerful. It is not about losing five pounds. It is not about losing 10 pounds. It is not about fitting into a dress. It is not about wearing clothes I wore five years ago. That is not, that cannot really keep you on track and that won't really keep you motivated because it's just losing five pounds or 10 pounds. So if that's been you or how you've been trying to stay motivated, that that's not enough. You must have this really deep sense or visual in your head of what your life could be like if you let yourself go downhill. And many people don't feel good right now, right? They feel very tired, they feel exhausted, they may have symptoms, may have this and that, but it's not really serious enough for them to make a change. And then also what I figure is they're not thinking ahead, they're thinking now. Right now I don't feel bad enough, Oh, my friend has this too, so it must just be part of aging. We must, you know, this is just normal. Everybody else around us has this. You know, the heartburn, the bloating, the gaining 10, 20 pounds. That's just normal. It's not that serious. There's nothing I, you know, I don't really want to do anything. It would be too hard, all these things. Because you're not making that thing something that you really need to stay, you know, that you're trying to avoid. Oh my God. Now my battery's almost dead on my phone great. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do this. I'd have to plug in my phone. So the thing is, is that you need to find a really deep why. You need to have a visual. You need to have something that is almost like scaring you, right? That's almost like a, such a strong visual so that you will stay motivated or stay on track. If you don't, that's probably why you're not staying on track. <coughs> oh boy. Sorry. <coughs> oh, <clears throat> and this is kombucha, so it's not, <coughs> it's not water. Oh, so it's a little, little strong, right? Multi-green, that's what I'm drinking right now, the green one. Kombucha is really great if anybody has an upset stomach or bloating or discomfort in your stomach for any reasons. Like, <laughs> I feel fine. I didn't drink a lot last night. I didn't eat crappy stuff. I ate really healthy, actually, last night. But if you did and you're feeling, your stomach's feeling a little, oh, today, try some kombucha. That'll really help. Or uh, probiotics, too. And so um, there's some questions that I wanted to go through before I get to the five steps. So I'm going to get to five steps that you can start to do right now, today, tomorrow, whatever, that'll get you on the healthy path. And we're going to talk about that. But first, I just want to go again into the why aren't you able to stay on track or what could be stopping you. So these are some really important questions that you can consider, okay? really and I've been doing this with myself not in eating but in another area of my life so I'm going to put my glasses on okay so if you have a pen paper whatever or if you want to come back to this video and write it down at that time hi Denise 
So first of all, you want to know what is your biggest challenge? So what is really bothering you now? What do you find hard right now? What do you find that's really challenging you, right? And I know some people said, oh, I don't have enough time to prepare the foods. I don't like shopping. Um, I think healthy eating is hard. I think it's, you need to spend too much time in the kitchen, um, things like that. So what do you find the most challenging? Staying on track. You want to, as soon as you start eating bad stuff, you go off and eat bad stuff for months and never get back on track. You don't like exercising, whatever it is. What is the challenge? What do you think is your challenge? And then also consider how long, hi Trina, then also consider how long has that been true for you? Like how long have you been saying those things or how long have, has you, have you seen that as a challenge? Um, write out all the arguments and how long has this been true and beliefs you have about why you see this to be true. So if you said it's, um, oh, healthy eating's hard, right? So then you would write out all the reasons why you think it's hard. Like, oh, because I don't really know what's healthy anymore because there's so much conflicting information out there because I have to spend hours in the kitchen because I don't really have time because when I go to buy healthy food, I don't know what I'm buying and, and it's expensive. Like write out all those reasons, all the, all the story that's behind it, all the things you justify and you, the ways you convince yourself that that story, that that thing you're saying is true and it's really the way things are. So you want to write all that out. And then this next very important stage or question you're going to write after, you're going to write out and you're going to think about what is good about all of this. So if you are, if you are um, challenged or whatever, it's like, I find it really hard, healthy eating hard. Then why do you stay stuck and why do you hold on to that belief? Why, how does it benefit you? So how does holding on to that belief benefit you? And you may say, well, it doesn't. It, there's a whole bunch of reasons why it doesn't benefit me. But it does. Because if it didn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have that belief. You wouldn't continue with it. You would make a change. And so, for an example, what you could be saying. So if somebody says, it's just so hard to eat healthy. Well, what, how that benefits you to believe that is that you don't have to make a change. Because change can be hard. So you're avoiding something that you see as being hard, which is making the change. Healthy eating is not the real thing. It's making the change. It's taking the time to, um, you don't want to take the time to look up the recipes. You don't want to take the time to figure out what foods are good or what foods are bad. You don't want to take the time to do any research. You like eating the crappy food. And if you, if you, you think that if you decided to eat healthy, then you would have to give up all your healthy food and you don't, you're not ready to. Or it could be that your family and friends eat kind of the bad food and because you're around them a lot, it's just easier, right? It's easier for you to follow and do it with it, what they do so that you don't have to make any changes. It's just more comfortable. You don't have to explain yourself. You can go out to the same restaurants they do. You can order off a menu. You can order anything. And you're thinking to yourself, if I start eating healthy, if I start changing what I eat, then it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard at those restaurants. So then you see that because you believe that, you're going to avoid it. So you're actually, no matter what, how you think you want to make those changes, you're going to almost avoid it because you see when you go to make those changes, how hard it's going to be and all the obstacles that are in your way. So of course, we tend to uh, avoid obstacles and uh, go towards something that's more familiar, something that's easier, something that's safer, something that uh, doesn't require a lot of work. So that's why you stay stuck. It's because to you, it is easier to stay stuck than to make any type of change. To you, you want to fit in with your friends, your family, more so than standing out. Uh, you're feeling more comfortable fitting in with everybody and you're afraid that if you start to make changes when you go to a party or a family gathering or a friend's place, it's going to be awkward. You're going to be um, standing out. People are going to focus more on you. Uh, they're going to think what, you're, what you eat or what you're doing is really odd. They're going to ask you questions. You're going to have to feel uncomfortable about answering them. So do you see what I mean? This keeps people stuck. It's not necessarily that you don't want help. It's that you're seeing all these things, even unconsciously, that how, oh, it's just, it's going to make me feel too uncomfortable. 
So if you think about what you really want and what you really desire, so what do you want? How do you want your life to be? How do you want to feel? So you can know all this. You can say, well, I want to feel lots of energy. I want to wake up in the morning and feel really good. I want to have sustained energy all day. Like I want to be able to get healthy and fit so that I can go skiing or so that I can, I don't know, whatever you want to do, right? Hike this trail you want to hike or whatever. So you know what you want. You probably do. If you don't, you should. You, can ha you should have a really good visual. You should have a really good, um, write out all the things you can do once you've hit that, um, how it's going to improve your life, all of those things. That's really, really, and if you haven't done that, that's obviously why you haven't achieved it either. Because you really want to focus on all the good things about it, right? All the good things. You really, really need to have all of that in your head. And if you don't, then that's obviously why you're not achieving it because you're not working towards something. So I want you to just really think about that and think about, so when you've achieved those things, right? Like think about you at that spot, what feels uncomfortable? That's another thing. Is there something about what you want at that stage where you're at does, that feels uncomfortable to you now? Like we are talking about again, right? So when you get there, are you going to be very different? So now you're all of a sudden hanging out with your friends and family and you're very different than them. And so you sense that that's going to be an uncomfortable time for you. And you sense that, wow, like, oh, I'd want to be going someplace different to eat. They'd want to be going to their old regular spots. And I don't want to, I wouldn't want to go there. And that's going to make me uncomfortable. And it's going to make them, them uncomfortable. Do you see what I mean? So that again, you'll tend to avoid it. And that's why when people, they can be doing really well, eating healthy and on that path on their own. But then again, when life resumes, when they get back into it with family, friends, a family function happens, a birthday party with friends happens, and they're in their old situation, and everybody's the way they always used to be, you might have changed, so you're at this different level, but you're feeling the discomfort being with them. And so it's feeling so awkward and so uncomfortable that your, your ego, your mind, yourself wants to bring you back to where you felt comfortable before. And so you tend to go back into old patterns, behaviors, you tend to give up because in a way you're going, you know, like something inside you knows that you're very uncomfortable. So it wants to bring you back to comfort. So even you may not be aware why you're giving up or why you go back to old habits, patterns, and ways of eating, but that's kind of why it's because it's bringing you back to comfort. Your body wants to protect you. And so know that when you're making changes, when you want to make a change, you are going to go through levels of discomfort. And it's kind of like the feel the fear and do it anyways. So you're going to go towards that or be at that level where you feel uncomfortable and you have to notice that that's where you're at. So that's where you're at. You are feeling uncomfortable. Something doesn't feel right. You're feeling frustrated. You're feeling anxious. You want to give up. That is because you've reached that level of discomfort. So you have to be aware that that's where you are and that's why you're there. So what it takes is more effort to get past that and to awareness that this is happening because my body wants to bring me back into awareness uh, that this is happening. And so, yeah, true, Kat. There we go. And so um, if you're just joining Kat, start this from the beginning when I finish because I really talk about that. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, so you note that when you're at that spot of uncomfortableness, when you want to, you know, get back to eating all the junk you used to, when you want to go back, you know, to doing the same old habits, behaviors, and you're so ready to give up and you're not really sure why you're just frustrated and mad at yourself that you're about to give up again, then note that often that is because you've reached that level when it's just required an extra effort and it's another commitment to say, forget it. I need to let go of that past stuff, that stuff. And I need to move forward into what I really want. And I'm feeling this discomfort because I'm trying to relive a kind of a different life right now. I'm, I'm changing as a person and it's going to feel uncomfortable. But once you are aware of that and you feel it and you know it, then you can start to, to make that moment feel comfortable again. So you're feeling, you're just reaffirming, yes, this is where I want to be. This is the life that I want. This is the type of, this is how I want to live. Yes, I do want to eat healthy food. Yes, I do want to be able to go to these different restaurants. I may have to let go of some of my old friends. I may have to say no to, for what they want to do. So that needs to become comfortable for you. You need to be really good and solid in yourself that you are ready for that. Because if you're not, you'll probably slip back into old habits and behaviors, right? You probably will. 
And what Kat said about was, you know, when you're so tempted by those treats and the Christmas stuff, I mean, I was too, but remember that it's just a small time. Christmas was only a few days. New Year's was last night. Today, maybe getting it, still having some of that junk, but then tomorrow is not one of the days when you go backwards, right? It's like tomorrow is a new day. So what also is very important during this phase or the season is that you, may, by making a plan so that on Tuesday, which is, no, Monday, tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow's Monday, <laughs> is to say, tomorrow I'm back on the healthy track right? But if you don't, if you don't have some sort of a plan, if you don't say you're going to do it, then you're probably just going to continue on and continue on and continue on. So tomorrow could be the day when you're like, okay, yeah, get rid of all this junk that I was eating. Now back to eating clean again. Yes, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Yes, I might feel bitchy for a while. Yes, I'm going to start to crave that stuff that I've been eating for the last two or three weeks, but what am I going to do about it, right? And what you could do is you could do like uh, two all raw days. You could do a smoothie day and a juice day tomorrow. So you could do something and have a plan for it where you say, okay, this is what I'm doing tomorrow. Just to kind of clear it out, like just to kind of clear out the junk. Because if you try to phase it out slowly or, you know, something like that, it may not work. You may just continually eating the same way. So just have some sort of a plan that tomorrow you're going to start something different. Tomorrow you're going to commit to this. Write it out. Write it out. Write it out. So if you um, are just hopping on, yeah, at the beginning, um, I kind of went over some really important questions to go over, get a pen and paper to answer, be very specific about it, do those questions, answer that, that might really help you. It's good for bringing some awareness to why you don't stay on track, right? And why you can't seem to continue and continue or actually even start to do what you choose to do if it's whether exercising or healthy eating plan. Okay. So now we're going to get to the five things that I suggest, the five things. So these five things are something I want you to focus on, okay? If you need some sort of focus for starting the new year, this is what it's going to be. So once again, if you have a pen and paper, great. If you don't, um, you know, rewatch this video with a pen and paper, paper <laughs> and write things down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing, number one, is starting your day the healthy way. That's true. I'm just going to open up a document on my computer. So that's really one thing that I notice when I talk to women is that where they're off, other than, you know, lots of times during the day, is definitely first thing in the morning. They're, they're first thing in the morning. They're either not eating, they're grabbing coffee and going. Um, they may not eat till later in the morning or by lunch, and that's the wrong thing to do. So how should you start your day? What I suggest is, um, I know I'm just looking up something real quick here, guys, is starting with lemon and water. So starting with lemon water, I'm just opening up. I already know this, but I have made a document here. Um, warm water and lemon juice. You can add ginger to it. You can add turmeric to it. You can add, there goes my, uh, my phone's dying. A lot of good time. So starting your day with warm water and lemon juice, and that's really going to help you hydrate if you haven't drank or eaten anything or had any nutrients for the whole night. Um, it's also good for detoxing. It's good for your skin. It's high alkaline. So in a way, it's helping to, your body to become more alkaline because acidic, lead, acidic body leads to illness, disease, inflammation, all that. Alkaline foods, alkaline things help your body to heal, help your body to detoxify, decrease inflammation, increase energy. And lemons are high alkaline. You could also add a little bit of apple cider vinegar, which is get the good stuff with the mother in it. So a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and a bit of Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt has um, a lot of minerals in it. Also, it helps you to, so I'm a type of person who for some reason, most often I don't retain water. I like, if anything, I'm constantly dehydrated. So adding a little bit of the Himalayan salt to the water helps my body to retain the water too. So that's kind of interesting. That's kind of the way, as well as the minerals. Uh, so first thing in the morning, start your day. My face, Brenda said, my Facebook is not working. That is one phone. Tr oh, sorry, Brenda, if you're watching this, I guess, I don't know, you just sent me a message. You wouldn't be watching this. Okay, and then... So hot water first thing in the morning. And some people say, well, with smoothies, I don't like smoothies in the winter because they're so cold. Well, I have my smoothie with my hot water. I, ha I drink hot water in the morning first. Uh, sometimes I have my coffee first. So 
Uh, so you can have warm liquids you don't need to wake up first thing and jump into having a smoothie if it's freezing cold and you're cold right so continue to have the warm liquids throughout the day uh, warm water and lemon juice or just warm water throughout the whole day so having your green smoothie and this is what I say don't give up at all so for people sometimes they tend to oh I just don't have time so I'm just gonna not have the green smoothie in the morning and it's honestly something that is so important to have every morning and it only takes a couple minutes there is no way that you don't have time um, you can even make it the night before if you can prep it the night before get it ready for the night before right all your ingredients in a jar in the fridge or something and throw it into your blender the next day whatever you got to do have it I'd say two green smoothies a day if that's all you do with your lemon water hot water and lemon water in the morning and two green smoothies a day you're gonna notice a huge difference decrease in craving increase in energy um, you're not gonna notice your digestions much better especially if you throw chia gel in your smoothie chia gel will really help your digestion or just eat chia gel um, so that is so the green smoothies make sure you have that and that's with water uh, real fruit frozen whatever uh, I don't like berries in mine real fruit you can add some super powders like I have wheatgrass powder here ashwagandha here oh Brenda you're on good <laughs> You missed some just watch it once it's over for, watch the replay chlorella um, so you can add things like that and then I have uh, juice plus which is super easy to just take these are capsules with raw fruits and vegetables and stuff just dehydrated in them still in their live form and this morning uh, yesterday I bought this I've had it before it's called kickstart by harmonic arts and it has cacao uh, shag and mushrooms mm, maca yerba mate oh god I can barely read it it's so small anyways it's good super powders but it's like a hot chocolate in a way you can just add it to water what I did this morning is I used almond milk and uh, so it's a chocolate kind of flavor but with a whole bunch of really good herbs in it and I added the, this to my uh, almond milk heated it on the stove and uh, added some coconut oil and I put that in my coffee like blended it and put it in my coffee uh, first thing in the morning it's really good you can do things like that add super nutrition to your morning super easy you have probably seen the recipes for the turmeric milk in the morning you can make turmeric honey ginger lemon juice pepper uh, coconut oil mix that with hot water that's a really good cleansing drink in the morning uh, extremely healthy for you so that is really good and someone else just commented let me just take a look so how do you guys what do you guys do in the morning what's your secret in the morning do you have your green smoothies I want you to answer under the video if you're watching Lisa where did I get it this kickstart I got it at harmonic arts I mean sorry I got it at naked naturals and I think you can get it at, at uh, Palm Market Island naturals too so health food stores harmonic arts you can also order their stuff online they're from Vancouver Island they're extremely amazing but you can buy tons of super powders and stuff now at health food stores so all you have to do is just take time to look around and spy it every once in a while no been drinking green juice oh that's good cat so you juice your own right then that's that's good too just note that that doesn't have any fiber which is fine um, the smoothies have the whole fiber of all the fruit and the vegetables so that's really good you know you're getting your fiber too. juices don't so they're great for cleansing they're great if you really need to give your digestive system a rest then juicing is a really good way to clear things out but it's a good idea to mix juices and smoothies too if you do just because of the fiber content of the smoothies and because in smoothies it's really easy to add super powders protein powders chia gel things like that that really add extra nutrition to your day whereas juicing is just the vegetables right but that's good too that's good too and now what I like to do for morning like so I usually have my water lemon juice then I have my smoothie about like a little bit later in the morning then if I get hungry again around 10 30 I will have chia gel mixed with fruit like chia gel mixed with grapefruit and oranges or chia gel mixed with berries and a little bit of my homemade granola uh, things like that and another thing I'm going to share with you guys for great breakfast is smoothie bowls or smoothie bowls and I'm going to be putting a recipe up soon smoothie bowls or you make a really soup 
super thick smoothie. It can be green, it can be chocolate with raw chocolate powder and blueberries and chia gel and hemp seeds. So you add tons of stuff in this, uh, in a thick smoothie. You put it in a bowl, you add chopped fruit, blueberries, whatever. You can add flaked coconut, you can add grano homemade granola, you can add nuts and seeds chopped up to it. And so you eat your smoothie like a bowl of cereal in a way. Really, really good. Really good. Uh, highly suggest that. So that's another way of having a smoothie, right? Perfect. So that's how you want to start your day. You, and so chia gel, right? has tons of nutrients in them, as well as it's really high in calcium. It's a complete protein. It has omega-3s. It's going to decrease your cravings throughout the day. It's going to hydrate you because it's that's what it does. It's going to greatly improve your digestion. If anybody's constipated, add chia gel to your day. At least three tablespoons a day, and you will notice a big difference. So chia gel is just chia seeds mixed with water. Okay, that's chia gel. And you need to eat chia hydrated. You need to eat chia hydrated. So really make sure you do that. So you want to start your day that way. And when I talk to most women who come to me for um, information or on a program or because they're not losing the weight or because they're not feeling good, that's the number one thing I notice is they don't eat, the pro they don't eat and drink properly in the morning. And when they do, huge difference, huge difference, huge difference. So every single morning I want you to do that. Now, my second tip for the five steps is taking time to do, taking five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. And I call these little rituals. And what it does is it starts your day the calm and centered way, and it ends your day the calm and centered way. So it helps decrease the stress. It helps you get focused. It helps you breathe properly, intake more oxygen because you're going to be doing some breathing. So what you do is five minutes, like all you have to do to start is wake up five minutes earlier in the morning. I suggest more, but if you don't have it, five minutes. Though for those five minutes, you get up and you sit somewhere and you just breathe and focus, relax and do not think about your day. So what you say to yourself is for five minutes, I just get to sit here, breathe, relax. You can read a spiritual message. You can read from a passages from a book um, if you think you're going to fall asleep, right? But you're going to relax and you're going to use your breath. Deep breathing in, exhale through your mouth. And focus on relaxing your shoulders and just relaxing you and grounding. You can focus like uh, some white lights coming through the center of your crown, down through your body and grounding you into the floor. Like right through down into the floor. And grounding helps you more calm, stay more calm, more centered, more focused. When we begin to get worried, anxious, that's because we're all up in our head. We're like... Brrr! There's so many things going through in our head. We're letting worry take over. We're not connecting to our body. We get all flighty. We get all light. We're not grounded. So when you start your day by feeling yourself grounding, by grounding yourself, by feeling that energy, the heavy energy, by connecting to your body. Also, connecting to your body helps you know if you're really hungry or not. So this brings the practice of body awareness to you. So you sit in that morning. Like I said, I do angel cards you can do, uh, write in your, I do angel cards and then I also write in my journal. So, um, do angel cards. Um, I read like the book, you know, the secret or the power by Rhonda Bar Byrne, because you could pick passages out and just read them, even start with that. And that way you're starting your day with positive messages. You're starting your day feeling more grounded and calm. You're taking some deep breaths and deep breathing cleanses us. So when you breathe deeply, did you know that that is really good way for your body to cleanse itself as well? You're bringing in oxygen and we don't get enough oxygen during the day, often because we're shallow breathing and we're like this. So if you're like this, you're closing off your um, muscles up here. Forget what it is. God, it's a trainer. Anyways, you're closing off the oxygen intake. So you're breathing shallow and yet most people are like this at their desk throughout the day. So when you're in the morning, you want to bring your shoulders back. You want to like inhale deeply and exhale. <sighs> Letting all the stress out, letting all the frustration out, taking in lots of oxygen, breathing in and exhaling. And you can do that many times a day. So start your day like that every day and make it, bring it longer. And another thing you could do is write out in your journal, not just how your life is now. You want to write how you want your life to be. You want to create your life. So be consciously creating your life every day. So in my journal, I write how I want my life to be. It's not how my life is right now. 
but I focus. So you're always, and you're in the moment, like I am living and doing this. Like I want to live in Bali and work in Bali. I'm living and working in Bali. I love the food in Bali. It's so amazing. I'm getting massages for $10. I love it. I can have three to four massages a week. I'm doing yoga five days a week. Oh my God. I love this. I love eating healthy. I love the food in Bali. I love being in the sun. I love the warm weather. I'm so happy and grateful. That's how you want to do your journaling practices. Create the life you really want. So start that in the morning. And then, so that's number two, rituals. And then in the evening, you want to have five minutes at least or 10 minutes again to wind down. You can do exactly the same thing. Do your breathing, do your readings, do angel cards, do journaling. Whatever it takes, you're going to shut down, shut off, away from the world, not worry about anything else. Just connect to your body, breathe, relax every evening. And then number three. So number three, you are going to focus on your thoughts, words, and beliefs. So at the very beginning of this video, I, I, I gave you some questions to answer and talk about and focus on and answer and write out. And that's a lot where you're going to see what your beliefs are, what your thoughts are. Um, pay attention to the words you say. I used to say, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of doing this. Oh my God. And now, of course, right? knows that I was probably tired a lot. What we say becomes a reality. It's very powerful. How do you talk to yourself? How do you talk to others? If you walk around saying, oh my God, healthy eating is so hard. Healthy food is so expensive. I can't stay on track ever. I'm never going to lose this weight. I gained 20 pounds. I don't like my body and I'm never going to lose the weight. It's just so hard to lose weight. It's so hard to eat healthy. There's no restaurants that have healthy food. I'm out all day. How am I supposed to eat healthy? Do you see what I mean? That is a horrible mindset. Horrible. So you want to catch yourself when you're talking like that. Um, so you want to watch your words. Because your beliefs are what you think about all the time. Your beliefs, right? So you see what your beliefs are. What do you think about? What are the words you say? How do you talk to others? How do you talk to your girlfriend? Those become your beliefs. So you believe that that's real in your life. You thought That becomes your story, right? The whole thing like we talked about at the beginning of the video. It's just so hard to eat healthy. I just can't stay on track, right? Those were your thoughts. They become your beliefs. They become your story. And that's why you feel stuck, right? So you need to pay attention to those every day all the time. Number four of some steps you're going to take, moving your body every day. Now, these sound so like, oh, well, of course, like this is so silly. But do you do it? The thing is, is that you can know these things. You can have heard them a million times, but if you don't do them, it's not going to work, right? So you want to move your body. And that could be stretching. That could be taking a walk. That could be um, doing 50 squats a day. It could be, you know, whatever you want to do. And I say don't stress out about it at first. Just get in the habit of doing something every day. Doesn't that sound better and easier? It can be five minutes of laying on the floor doing stretching. It can be wall squats. It can be um, push-ups. It can be doing the plank for as long as you can do the plank to begin with. It can be whatever it has to, whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be something hard. The most important thing is to cons be consistent. So why people, so, so often in New Year's, people have these resolutions or these things that they're going to do and they're big, right? Big. So they go out and they may do them for a week or two weeks or something. But it's a lot. They're doing a lot at once. They're trying to handle a lot. Or it's a big change from where they are now. And so what happens is, like we talked about before, it becomes uncomfortable. Oh, your body starts to resist and fight you because that is not your life. All of a sudden, you're trying to change and become a different person so fast and too much that your subconscious or whatever is going to pull you back. Pull you back. Because, like, don't change that fast. Oh, my God, what are you doing? This isn't really you. This isn't you. What are you doing? Who's the Where's Diana? Hello? You need to come back. <laughs> so you're going to go fall back into the old habits and behaviors. You're going to quit. You're going to give up because you're going to feel uncomfortable because it's not going to feel normal to you. And we always tend to go back to what's normal, right? So just start by doing one or two things really consistently every single day for a period of time. Then that becomes your normal. Then that is something you can stick with. Try not to go too big, too much all at once because you won't stick with it. So moving your body every day, that's what I mean. It doesn't have to be a huge exercise program. It doesn't have to be 90 minutes at the gym. It doesn't even have to be at a gym. I just want you to start finding some way to move your body every single day. Okay? That's 
that's number four number five is something again that you might say well that's obvious that's silly well of course eat more vegetables and greens more 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 than you ever have so what's that gonna do take a drink I have some kombucha kombucha right now oh that's good when you eat more veggies and greens you're feeding your body the nutrients it requires to function so you're feeding and fueling your cells right at the cellular level because that's the food your cells need truly is the food there's it's not hard it's not rocket science eating healthy is not hard at all it's actually so simple so simple as in the rules are simple right the rules and what you do are simple to stick with it is what's really not hard what seems to be hard for people so you want to eat more vegetables and greens the greens have essential fatty acids the greens have higher protein the greens have calcium the greens have chlorophyll the greens have the nutri the minerals the greens have the vitamins the greens have all of that the vegetables same thing basically so you want to eat a wide variety of vegetables cooked and raw you want to eat a large variety of greens cooked and raw and you want to get them in your day any single way you can in all ways you can this is going to decrease your cravings for crap increase your cravings for the good food give you more energy help your body to detox um, improve your skin by far you'll notice that huge improve your hair improve your skin uh, nails um, what else oh it will help if you have any um, allergies or anything now of course we are also taught I could add a number six and that would be get rid of the gluten the dairy the wheat the breads the muffins all of that although you could have some muffins with healthy ingredients but yeah you're gonna get rid of most of the junk but does that mean you never eat it again no it does not have to mean that it does not at all I usually have the rule I'm usually about 80 to 90 percent good and then 10 to 20 percent depends on what it is <laughs> of the other food because sometimes when you try to go all or nothing never is never works trying to be perfect 100 percent of the time just doesn't work very very few people can be like that you know athletes have to be like that for a certain period of time but usually when the race is over